All right, welcome to part two. I hope you did enjoy the first part where I was dissecting Toy Story 4. We were going into a few shots, analyzing the lighting techniques, and now we are replicating that beautiful shot. So before we jump in, I want to let you know that the rig I was using is coming from Agora community. It is only used for educational purposes. You can find the link of that download below. Also, the scene files will be uploaded so you can get the light rig, which I created to get the final result. And thanks so much for helping the like button to optimize his scenes. He was able to kick everything off to the farm. Um, he got everything back, the Renis, but now he is struggling a little bit with compositing. He needs to comp all the AOVs together. And if you could maybe help him out just to set up the layers a little bit and uh, so he can actually submit his, uh, his project for the finals. And you can also help him by subscribing to the channel and also making sure well, you have all the bells and whistles turned on. All right, so let's get into replicating this light rig. All right, so we are in Maya and I'm using Arnold for this, but you can use any render because I'm just showing you lighting techniques and this should apply to any other render engine. At the bottom here, I do have my reference image, which is from the clip. And if you might be wondering what I'm using to showcase this on top of Maya, this is using PureRef and you can see all the details about that in my previous video named PureRef. Check it out and get smarter. You can see Woody's silhouette here in the render. And let's just get going by adding our main key lights. So I'm going to Arnold menu, go to lights and I click area lights which will generate me an area light in the origin. If I scale it up, rotate it back, and then go to the attribute editor by Ctrl A, increasing my exposure to 15, and you can now see we do get some light, and we do see Woody in full glory <laughs> overlit. But I always overlight my images first to be able to place my lights accordingly, and then I always roll them back. It's just a lot easier, and it's a nice workflow to get your light directions working. All right, so now let's just pull back the light and also reduce the light scale. It's a bit large and we get very soft shadows by doing that and also reduce the intensity a little bit more. And this way it just helps me to align the light and match it to the reference. You can see we do get this light on his head, on his um, hair here and then on his cheekbone. So we are just trying to kind of replicate that lighting direction and we might overshoot it a little, go a bit up and just try to match it as close as possible. Also, we do have a warmer light, so you can use color temperature, but you can also just uh, set the color. I like to pick the colors, and I'm just picking his cheekbone color here. It's obviously way um, oversaturated. Also, make sure once you pick your color to set your value back to one, and then you're probably way too oversaturated, but it gives me the right hue, which is perfect. So maybe adjust it as slightly towards more yellow, um, something like that, and then check the exposure again. And I think this is going pretty close. You can see the reflections on the pencil. And obviously this won't, won't be a one-to-one -one match, but we are getting very close. I'm also increasing the light source just to soften the lights a little bit more. So next up, let's place the rim light on the opposite side. So again, I'm going to my menu, create a light, and I also go to look through selected, that way I can frame and place it right off the bat. And now go back to the light settings, increase exposure, let's go to, uh, to 12 or something, you can see we get the nice highlights. You can now use temperature, let's go for 11,000, which is a nice cold blue. And then we just reduce the exposure again until we are satisfied with the intensity. I'm just now trying to roughly match the placement and I'm looking at the reference all the time while placing this light. And you can see it's, it's roughly on his side. We should go a little bit higher to catch more light on his hat. And we probably want to make the light source a little bit larger just to soften out the shadows a tiny bit, but I think this is now showcasing exactly um, the rim light. We might be a little bit too blue, I think this is a bit more teal color. So instead of using color temperature, you can again go to more like a teal color like that, maybe a little bit more blue. And now let's let's uh, get to the up light. So it's essentially a reflection from the floor. So I create another area light, I go to my perspective camera here, and I just place it um, underneath Woody and we increase the light exposure to have a strong up light just so we can place it. So back to 12, you can already see this looks nice and monstrous. We do want to align it a little bit. So we do want this side facing shadow. Let's reduce the exposure a bit more. 
and also I think what would help us is, is if we look through that light that way it's a little bit easier to place it um, in an angle right because we want a roughly a light you can see also his arm is shadowing his chin area and is also his nose is casting a shadow um, towards the left as well so we can rotate this a little bit to the side just to get roughly in, into the same lighting area and I think we are pretty close by placing it like that I'm looking at the at the shin shadow and also at the nose shadow and I think we are pretty close also you can then um, scale up the light a little bit more or move it back like that move it a little bit back and then scale it up to soften the shadows some more and then we can bring back the intensity and also what I want to do is um, soften out or at least uh, change the color like that let's go a little bit more um, less warm go a bit more to the yellows like that so now we do have the fill uh, sorry now we do have the up light we do have the strong key light we have a rim light but we still need to fill it in because you can see we have a very dark shadow around the nose area so now what i want to do is create another light which is um, placed in the front of woody which will help to fill in this dark rich shadows so i'm just placing that fairly quick increasing the exposure again around 10 you can now see it's nicely filled in obviously you do want to tweak it and you do want to also have it a little bit in the warmer side just to help balance everything in and what you need to know is that i'm not using the exact acid which was uh, used in the movies i don't have the same shaders but i do have roughly the lighting direction which i think is working quite good we can try to increase this a little bit and now we, we can see that we do have this up light. My shadow here is a bit too strong, so I can just increase the light size and then we get a softer shadow around the nose area. And a little bit more fine tuning, obviously, I think the rim light is a bit too strong, so I can just render this region here, reduce the rim intensity just to have it a little bit less. And we can also change it to be a little bit more towards the greenish teal color. And then also the key light is probably not um, colored enough. So let's just increase the saturation a little bit more and go a bit more to the reds. Something like that. And then we can also reduce this a little bit more. I think this works rather well. So now maybe just push it back a little bit. And I think this showed you how you can quickly replicate lighting setups. Obviously you should spend a little bit more time on this, but essentially this is how you kind of match a light rig. Alright, I hope this was informative and I hope you liked how I was setting up the light rig. It was rather fast paced, but I just wanted to show you the techniques and the area light positioning and the color scheme. So I hope you liked the video and I also hope you like the new format, which I'm trying to put out regularly. And also leave a comment below if you have ideas for a future video about this format. So thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.